odds are you make life a lot harder than it needs to be. And I'm not trying to insult you or put you down by saying that. And I'm not trying to ignore struggles that people go through. But like I said, odds are you make life significantly harder than it actually has to be. I want to talk about exactly how we do this. So humans tend to have a lot of unnecessary resistance to life, to the present experience. Essentially, we have our present experience and we fight against it. We fight against our feelings, our thoughts. Basically, things arise within the consciousness, within our consciousness in the present, I mean. And then we don't like some things, so we try and push those away and we fight against them. And then we like other things and then we try and grasp onto them and cling to them. And this whole game of like avoiding and chasing is exhausting. It's actually the cause of a very large portion of the suffering that you most likely experience. <laughs> the fight against the present and whatever is arising inside of it is futile because it's already existing. What's in the present already exists. Fighting against it is like just this added layer of struggle and it's extremely uncomfortable. It burns unnecessary energy, literally just kind of exhausting you. And it's actually rooted in delusion. This way of relating to life, it requires an inaccurate perception of reality to continuously perpetuate itself. So this is one core way in which you most likely make life a lot harder than it needs to be. There's a flow to life. There's, everything is a flow of energy. Energy moving, thoughts arising, emotions arising, thoughts passing, emotions passing people coming and going. Everything is just changing energy within formless consciousness. And the more that you can learn to just allow the energy, right, allow what's arising within your consciousness, whether it's a thought, an experience of any kind, person, etc., to arise, exist within your consciousness for the time that it exists and then pass, the more you can allow that flow to continuously happen, you'll be experiencing a lot less suffering. The more you resist it, is the more you resist ease. There's a beautiful rabbit just running on by. See, what if I was just clinging to the experience of this rabbit has to stay here forever? That's gonna create a lot of unnecessary suffering. But of course the rabbit arises, it's beautiful, I enjoy it, and then it passes. I don't try and cling on to the beauty or the feeling of like, wow, that's awesome. Right, it's just coming and then going. And of course we get attached to people, things, etc. This makes it a lot harder Right? But essentially, you get the picture. Is that everything is constantly in this state of flux, coming and going, arising and passing. And that the more you cling and the more you hold on, the more of your own energy you burn and the more you exhaust yourself. So kind of just being able to kind of let go, right, when it's necessary, which is most of the time, allows life to kind of just loosen up and move and flow. Life is kind of this balance between holding on and letting go. If you have a flower, you have to water the flower in order to keep it alive. So you're kind of holding on to the relationship with the flower, but naturally the flower dies. And then when it dies, you have to let it go. And then even, you know, after you water the flower, you go and do something else, you let it go, right? Same thing with an intimate relationship, right? You hold on to it to maintain it, but then sometimes you gotta let it go. Maybe you break up, uh, people die, right? Maybe you gotta go to work. Something else requires your attention. You got to let it go. And even in the midst of a painful experience, like let's say a breakup, right? You feel that attachment wound, right? It's like a, a significant part of your life is kind of ending. But the more that you're able to just kind of ease into your grief and ease into the feelings that are arising, ease into your body and really not disassociate, really just allowing yourself to feel the more it flows, the more connected you actually feel to yourself and the less suffering you actually experience. Suffering here I'm defining as just resistance to reality, resistance to what is arising in the present right now. I don't really refer to suffering as, let's say, the feeling of grief or the feeling of shame or even sadness. I refer to suffering more so as what occurs when we resist these things, when we fight against them, 
rather than learning to relate to them from a place of just non-resistance. Moving on, you most likely cling on to a lot of ideas and beliefs that don't serve you and even close you down. They maybe make you feel contracted in your body, in your heart. There's like physical tensions in your gut, shoulders are raised, right? Just a lot of ideas you hold that make you feel disconnected from life. A lot of beliefs you hold, maybe like how um, life is hell, life is just suffering. Maybe you hold ideas about how you're a victim, right? You have this sort of personal narrative, maybe due to some kind of overwhelming or traumatic experience, right? About how life is fundamentally just always unfair and it's ugly, etc. And of course, you got to notice how this actually just kind of closes you down and that it's, it's not really 100% true. It's just an interpretation of reality. Um, sure, a lot of these things can hold um, some value or some truth, but when it becomes your whole narrative of, of life and yourself, um, this, is, this is going to lead to a lot of unnecessary suffering. Essentially, this is kind of like a mental virus. Right? Like even just kind of having beliefs about how much of a victim you are, etc. This isn't really who you are. This is kind of just a set of thoughts and emotions that are kind of stuck within you. You're identifying with them and they're kind of playing themselves out. They're kind of like stuck within your, your body mind. Right? And it's up to you to really process this kind of stuff, and then learn to just let it go. And this can actually take some intentional effort. I recommend going to the therapy and healing section of my book list, checking out a few of those books, right? Reading them so that you got a good little kind of direction to go, right? So you're not so confused. I don't really have the time to go into that in this video. Of course, that's like a whole other video. But you get the point. You most likely have a lot of ideas and beliefs that just keep you close to life and really just investigate this in your own life, right? Just notice when you have certain thoughts and then your body starts to like contract, your heart starts to contract. Maybe you're judging other people, you're very critical of them, you're hateful of them. And then you actually start to notice you feel contracted, you feel kind of tense doing it, right? This is your body literally signaling to you, you gotta let that go. You have to let go of those thoughts. You have to let go of those beliefs. If you have a belief that's always making your heart feel numb, dull, contracted, tight. There's like a closure in the heart, right? You can actually feel it in your body. It doesn't feel open and alive and vital. You don't feel just a sense of love in your heart. Right? If you're not connected to that, you have all these beliefs that are shutting you down, right? This is your body literally telling you, hey, something about this is very fundamentally wrong. Something about this just isn't even true. So moving on, Holding on to unnecessary tension in the body burns a lot of energy, closes you down, and also wears you down. So our body can be tense due to a lot of trapped emotions, beliefs that we have, interpretations that we like to hold on to. And you really want to begin to just kind of notice your body's tension. And essentially it's tense because you're not really present within it. You're not present within the internal space of your body and you're kind of just disconnected from it. A lot of people live on the surface of their body or just very kind of like outside of their body, really not grounded in their body. Their consciousness doesn't really permeate their body. They're not really detecting that. Typically because there's wounds that get stored in the body. Beautiful bird. There's wounds that get stored in the body. And then to actually bring your awareness back into the body means that you have to go through those emotions that were once there. For example, maybe when you were young, you were hit with a belt by your parents or something. And you literally had to like disassociate from that part of your body because the physical pain of that hit was too much for you to handle. Plus there's like the humiliation that comes with that kind of experience. You're very afraid as well because you're being physically dominated. Oh my God, this bird is amazing. <laughs> You're being physically dominated by your caretaker. It's confusing, etc. So a lot of that gets like stored in the body. You got to kind of disassociate from it because you're too young to actually handle it, right? And this kind of leaves a lasting mark on you to the point where now you're, you know, 20 years later, 30 years later, however, however many years later, you're not connected to that part of your body where the emotions are, the pain is, right? And you take this, you take your experience for granted. You think that like, this is kind of just how life is. This is how it works. This is what I am. Um, but you kind of just lack a contrast in your experience. For this kind of work, I'd recommend reading the work of Judith Blackstone. Belonging here is really good. The Subtle Body, The Enlightenment Process, Trauma and the Unbound Body. 
Um, absolutely fantastic work. I've never stumbled upon anything as useful and practical as that for exactly what I've just mentioned here. My last point is that you're safe to really kind of look into this stuff. You're safe to really just start opening back up to life. You're safe to kind of look into this kind of psychological, emotional, spiritual phenomena and just begin opening back up. In fact, it's dangerous not to. It's really not good for your health to always be stuck in these like shut down states. They're going to impact your relationships and your career and your just your overall well-being, right? So it can be kind of tricky and you don't really want to give yourself too much, right? Just do what you can handle, right? And then just notice how much you can handle and don't, don't exceed it. And of course, just go easy on yourself when you're doing this kind of work because, you know, a lot of people can start this kind of work and then they, they kind of jump on this treadmill of like, I got to be doing more and more and more. It turns into like this grind, right? This, this kind of work isn't a grind. It's about just coming back into connection with yourself and just living from a place of grounded presence within your own being. This makes you far more authentic. This makes you far more easier to connect to and more available, more emotionally available. Available. This allows you to really discover your true calling in life. You can really feel what's aligned with you, what works with you. You can really feel what path is right with you in life because you have this deeper connection to yourself. So all this stuff naturally begins to just like pop up into your awareness. Right? The more you inhabit your body, the more you connect to yourself, this kind of stuff just starts to get clearer and clearer and clearer. This work can be kind of difficult, but I promise you that it's very worth it. That's it for this video. If you're interested in working with me one-to-one, -one, you can apply to do so. Link is in the pinned comment. Take it easy.